right. So we're going to talk engagement plot. I'm super yeah. excited. You've been doing, I feel like you've been doing a lot of press for it. Like there's a lot of like different things happening. I think so. I mean, yeah. okay. So it's a new world towards me, but everyone's just reached out and I'm like, yeah, all right, let's do it. Um, hard to juggle around the schedule, but I'm trying to make it work. So, um, which is awesome. Like I want, I want the press. I mean, I, I, I'm excited for everybody to see it Sunday. So yeah. Yeah. So, so it. yes, Sunday up TV. Um, yeah. Your leading lady has a busy weekend. She, she does. <laughs> Saturday's got a movie coming out. She's a little two-timer, you know? Yeah, a little two-timer, I see. What's going on, Rach? That is so funny. I love it. Well, she's wonderful. So people will be able to see her Saturday and Sunday. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I was wondering, and I wanted to touch base with you on this, because this film is based off a book. Yes, it is. By Krista Phillips. Yes. And and the book is not out yet. Uh, No, it's out. I don't know where, is it? yeah, because people have taken pictures of the book that they okay. found it in stores and they bought it and they sent it to me and I'm like, oh, great. That is awesome. Cool. Right. Um, my take on it is the original thing was I never really read the book. <laughs> I just, so he's, which is a rarity in this form, but uh, I had an expose sent to me of a breakdown of the book so that I could okay. lo- like the idea or not. And Taylor sent down a, a expose of it, which was like, about an eight pager and I'm like, okay, this is definitely a doable version and, and we can make this into a movie. And then we decided to, you know, continue for the process. I just love the idea already. So I was like, okay, let's yeah. do it. My mind was already just so focused on the movie. So right. um, I didn't go there yet, but people right. have told me they've read it. They like it. They want to read it because of the movie and they may read it more. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to know how close it is because you never know, like with a book and a film, like you never know, like how closely they follow each other. I so. think there's probably you no know, saying that I haven't read it, but I, I think there's a lot of similarities. I met the writer on set. I asked her, I said, you know, was this something you, you had dreamed it to be? And she just like looked around. She's like, I never thought of it like coming to life like this. And I'm like, yes, that's all I care about. You know, but book adaptations can either be terrible or they can be fantastic and can be better. And I, I brought this up to Brian Bird. I said, if I ever do a book adaptation, I want it to be better than what the book is. So I'm hoping that we are, no offense to the writer, but I think she was dreaming the same thing in the moment too. Because it's the only way to honor a book really well. Right. You know? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Well, I'm super excited about that. And then the other thing, because I was actually on her, um, I was on Chris's website this morning. Um and I don't think that I previously kn- knew this, but there is some, it's somewhat faith-based. There's some faith kind of wrapped in to this storyline. Is that correct? There, there might be, because people said they found the book at Christian stores and at Hobby Lobby, I think, and stuff yeah. or something. Yeah. But so I, I don't know, because I didn't read the book, but our faith-based scenes are scenes I know we wrote for the movie. Okay. Um, I think that it takes the faith from what I can take from it is, and referring back to the exposition pages is about Holy Hannah and what she represents and that she was dynamically different than the rest of the characters. She wanted to stick by her faith. It actually reminds, so this is how it really kind of grabbed me. I go, it sounds like a kind of like a true story to me because I remember one, I don't watch The Bachelor, but I remember a Bachelor episode or something where a girl had shown me and we were talking about it and I said, well, show me the episode. And I think this girl, Heather, I forget her name. She's like in San Diego or something, Cali. Um, But she was very faith oriented. And it might've been the one with the guy was calling or something like that. But uh, clearly she was on a, uh, on a different page than everybody else and left for those reasons or something like that. So I thought it was based off of the true story. (laughs) Ah, Not sure exactly, but I was like, this sounds very similar to something I've seen on the show. So I brought it up to Brian and everything. Yeah. I think that's the elements of it, but it, it might, it might be, we, we wrote the, this, the movie is more, uh, from the script play out, there's subtleties and you can see them in her character. And then we have one scene. that's always like our soul craving scene where there's like a redemption and, you know, message based scene to it. And it's really the scene between her and her father that drives that home. Okay. Oh, I love that. This is going to be great. I'm super excited. Can you talk a little bit about um, the production? Because I, I've seen previous interviews with you. Where you talked about using a drone and using certain things, and that this film is going to be like visually 
extraordinary. So I'm just curious to know your take on that. I hope it doesn't take away from my second movie that I believe is visually more extraordinary. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I always, always push the envelope in these because I'm, I'm new to this space. So I, this is my first like 50-50 spectrum to uh, these rom-coms. Um, but I do believe cinematically you should always treat a movie like a movie. And I, I, and, and I would never let the budget change you know, the way that I approach a movie. Um, so we have some drone shots and everything, but we went through like Garden of the Gods. You'll see that in the opening. It's a beautiful rock quarries that are naturally built. Um, I found out when I was back there, I like to spend time in the places that I'm shooting. So this was new to me to be in Colorado Springs. And I would walk around, you know, weeks prior before my cast got there, before all the other prep and find some history. And so uh, Garden of the Gods, I found out was actually like a peace place um, for all of the American Indians to come together and they, during a certain time. And then they would, there would be no wars during that time for winter and everything else. There would be a time of rest and everything like that. I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. And it just kind of brought some new, you know, perspective and everything. And then um, the first shots of the movie were actually Trevor wanted to come out with me. I love him because just like, yeah, that's what you do, dude. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And it was just me and the drone operator and Trevor. <laughs> and we're nice. getting all the shots we need. Uh, my dad who was a DP got some more uh, on some other days because I was busy with cast and stuff and, and wardrobe and everything prepping for the, uh, the two prep days. But um yeah, I mean, uh, I, I definitely, I think, I think cinematically you'll appreciate Garden of the Gods in the background, the perspective of the castle, um, these huge, massive cypress trees. We tried to include like random ram that were running by that was just, you would see. Um, cool. And I know there is actually, I, I don't know if anyone will notice, there's a walk and talk with, with Trevor and Rachel and a deer just like chilling going by in the background. It's there. If somebody sees it, great, awesome. But we had, I wanted the wildlife to be part of everything we're doing. I'm like, this is Colorado, yeah. like, let it, let it be. Right. As long as it's oh. not distracting, we're good. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I have to keep an eye out and see if we can, uh, see if we can see it. So, so yeah, so everyone's going to know Rachel Boston and Trevor Donovan. A lot of, they've done Hallmark movies and, and whatnot. And so I'm curious to know, we're going to kind of st steer a little bit here. When we were at Rama Drama, and you directed Acting with the Stars, which was phenomenal, <laughs> yeah. by the way. I mean, it was, it was awesome. I'm and so I know blessed everybody loved that because that was so, you know, random and I'm glad we found something great. So that's cool. Well, that's going to be happening at another event because they have asked, what do we want to see again? And we're like, Acting with the Stars, <laughs> like we want to see that again. It was so funny. Like it was, just I, guess I'm, I guess I might be going back. I don't I, know. I you know. guess <laughs> you'll be coming to the next one. Um, location and dates are supposed to be released soon. So stay tuned. Um, so yeah, we loved it. And I think, I think for a lot of the fans, we really love the, um, the improv and just kind of seeing and seeing yes. those actors together because we never see them on camera together oh my, my idea the... my idea of leaving was like hey you guys want to i even told them i said we do an ensemble ca uh, you know comedy and they're like yeah dude and i was like all right let's let's think about this a little bit um oh, the setup was great too though but i you know i really enjoyed doing it. i love improv and i love comedy so well, i love a little bit of space and then we talked camera and then we made it more of a theatrical stage approach so that everybody can enjoy it yeah it was very good is there anyone from the rom-com hallmark realm that you'd want to work with that you haven't worked with? Um, I'm getting a lot of pressure from a lot of people. Really? <laughs> to, work with, to work with Tyler Hines. Um, <laughs> yeah. He's with Hallmark <laughs> right now though. So, you know, and me being independent, I'm like, hey, you know, we'll have to wait till that's kind of up. Um, right. But uh, a lot of good people actually. And um, I've known Jesse Hutch for a while. Great dude. Um, would love to bring him in for a comedy and stuff like that. Um, hmm. I tease Aaron Cahill quite a bit because there's a story behind it, but that's between her and okay. I. It's pretty funny. Okay. Um, and she's like, she feels bad. She's a sweetheart. She feels bad. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't. I, in this space, it's kind of it's kind of hard because you know it's new to me. But I'm starting to get to know everybody. I had a great time with Wes Brown, just getting to know him, and um, I like that first. I like the relationship. I like creating you know that first, and then it shows me who I'm going to be working with. I talked to Danica for a long time. I've had uh, her reach out and a lot of people reach out about her. Um, it's about, you know, once I have that idea, I like the, the relationship there and I, I like the personality and everything. And I think there's a good shot and I go by gut instinct, not just finding the right stuff on the page to match them to. Right, right. And that's, and that's what happened with you and Trevor. 
I mean, yeah. that's sort of like how that is. So talk about how that, how that happened, because this isn't your first movie with him. No, I, did, I was the executive producer on a movie called uh, Aloha with Love in Hawaii. That's where we met. Um, and then ironically, actually, Trev and I hung out um, for about five to six days after the movie. Um, he was supposed to go somewhere else. I, went, I was like, I'm going to this resort and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to chill for a little bit. And he go, then all of a sudden hit me. I was like, do you mind if I stay at your same resort? I'm like, yeah, man, whatever you want. Then we ended up surfing, hanging out together. I was like, dude, this guy, we end up having like very parallel lives, like growing up, going to Mammoth all of our lives. He's born in Mammoth. Um, I have a cabin up there. He has a place up there. Um, just growing up in that kind of winter atmosphere where Cali guys that are born and raised kind of had the same similar lives in a way. And so we're like, how did we never meet in the entertainment industry? Um, and then eventually, like, as we get talking, like, it would just became a gel. And I was like, okay, this is going to work. I teased him about the engagement plot, thinking he was too busy. And I also said, I can't afford you, bro, whatever. And he's like, no, when are the dates? And he just kept, <laughs> I kept teasing him and teasing him. Finally, I gave him the dates and the dude flew straight from Canada and showed up. I'm like, all right, I guess you're going to do this. So, Wow, that is so yeah. awesome. And then you have another project with him. I do. We have yeah. one coming up in October, uh, Just Jake. I'm excited about this one. I'm, we're pulling a little, uh, same budget and everything, but we're pulling a little bit of uh, favors and corners and it should be pretty fun. Nice. um i'm in talks with some people and uh if we get the cast that comes through it'll be a nice ensemble cast i get to wink back to a few uh cast members from happy camper a few from uh one or two from engagement plot and i get to um it's not really metaversing but it's people that i'd like to almost like a happy madison you know adam sandler kind of approach yeah. in the rom-com world if you oh. so to say um i'm in that. talks with if it works out right uh, with uh, Jenna Kramer, um, we've got uh, possibly Rob May Mays coming in for uh, like a big comedic like portion of the port, you know, the movie. It'll be a fun cast group. I, uh, James Eckhouse is we're in conversation with. It seems like it's all gonna kind of work out. I know Kier Kiergaard is coming back from Happy Camper. I've got, um, I've got. Sorry, my phone was uh, okay. These calls coming in. Um, and I've who else? Uh, Gigi Orisola. She was in my. Um, and happy camper she's coming back which will be great so nice. yeah and it's gonna be fun and that'll we be in colorado with, and that'll be filmed in colorado too yes yeah. yes and we we're partnering with tmz they're part of the movie they open up oh, and they close okay. at the end there's a trevor's gonna be playing a country star there's a lot of things going on in this i've got some real uh, caveats back to nashville a lot of country artists coming in just as favors and helping me out and It'll be a fun, it'll be a fun movie That's to make. That's so cool. Yeah. I love it. I love that. So um, you've talked about, you know, how when you like, if you, when you're filming in Colorado, that you love to bring in local talent, local people. Um, are you going to have some of the same people on this new yeah, movie so that you've had work with? Kira Kierkegaard is actually, if you, when you watch Engagement Plot, the girl who plays Kelsey, who's my girl from Newport Beach, even though she's from Colorado, um is this you know the antagonist of Rachel in every sense of the way girls going two different paths two different goals in life um the decisions we make and I think her character is very big on what society pushes now and, and our culture now and very funny I love her timing she she gets the comedic chops I met her husband at our rap party and I just shake his hand I was like something's right here. Like I work off weird instincts. And I told Brian, he's like, well, we got to see the tape. I go, I know we'll see the tape. Sends a tape in with, you know, 80 others. I'm like, yep, sure enough. And so we brought him in on happy camper. So her and uh, Kira both in happy camper, her husband and you know, her, but I'm bringing Kira in to play um, J and just Jake to play Trevor's manager. Oh, okay. Which will be fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's very so cool. uh, yeah. So was her so husband an actor? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. There's this, there's this thing in stigma with being actors that if the agency's not putting you at the top list, you don't come in a lot. Like I never would get his name. Uh, they both lived in LA and didn't work for about like 10 years. And that happens to a lot of, a lot of actors. It's not whether they're talented or not. It's just the right. People didn't see him. And, you know, to be honest with you, when we put them in movies, they get credibility. And after Andy's done two movies, she's been working in Colorado a lot now. Um, so I'm just blessed to see careers rise um, from the ashes or from, you know, breaks and things like that, you know? So it's really cool to provide those opportunities for them. Yeah. What a great service that is. I mean, that's like so cool. I love that. Yeah. You're very generous with your time. It was so, it was really nice meeting you at Rama Drama. I, um, 
it was just, we, I, I don't know. There is something about you too. Cause I also use my gut instinct a lot with things. And I mean, you made it onto the center of my vision board for 2022. I mean, clearly, hey. <laughs> I mean, like, it's just don't crazy. Know how I did that, but that's awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. That conversation that we had like forever. I mean, it was, it was, I think it was, it might've been in January actually. And I had re just reached out because you had posted a picture of the three generations that worked on the engagement plot. Oh, um, that is Yeah, talk happened, about yes. that. I love that. That was like such a cool picture. So it was a really cool opportunity. My, um, so Brian's son wrote his first movie and then in talks was like, man, you got to direct this for him. And then I said, okay, let's do it. And then on top of that, I brought in my dad to be the direct photography. My brother uh, came out and pulled focus and um, on, then we had Larry uh, Douglas, who was in Colorado, who actually was the one who got the rights to the book originally before we, we our, my, our company, Brian and I's company bought it. And then, you know, we built it in the screenplay from the adaptation. Um, and him and his son were on the movie. His son, Chris, is a great DP back in Colorado. He was my A camera operator. Um, so it was kind of, it was actually, instead of three generations, there's three families that were working together, okay. father, sons. Yeah, which is kind of cool. That is so cool. I yeah, there's a that. definite, I guess we are really that I, I always say I want my sets to be family. And that felt like the most family dynamic you can get, have uh, three father-son families leading the way, you know, so it was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, I would say it was pretty family oriented. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is so cool. I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, well, I know you are super busy, so I'm going to let you go so that you can answer emails. I know you're flying out tomorrow to Nashville, and then you're going, you're, and then you're headed right to Colorado for another project, right? I, I head to Colorado on Monday, yes, for a TV series that we're starting. So um, that one's going to, that that's a scripted reality, which is kind of fun. Um but, you know, they brought me in because I'm the scripted guy. So I think that's a, it was a good pull. So I'm show running that and directing the first eight episodes. And then we'll see how the following seasons roll. Um, if it picks up and does well and everything, I think it should. But um, if it does, I got to battle next year on whether I'll be able to direct them or not. It would be more, you know, based on my schedule and stuff. So, yeah. uh, but, it, you know, it's fun. Like I've, I've, I've just finished the eight episodes and the show running and with a great writer, Jay Wolf, who's a good friend of mine, and he does an excellent work. And. I'm about to work with David McCullough, who's a great, he produced, you know, he's the producer and creator of like the dynasty and a lot, a lot of shows you guys are probably anybody, anything reality, you probably see him associated somehow. So yeah. um, great, great guy too. He's been a lot of help. So It'll, it should be fun. It's awesome. It's so yeah. awesome. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. And well, been, you're also, oh, go ahead. No, no, they've been, they have great graces. I'm able to shoot four episodes, leave for just Jake and shoot another four. So. Well, that's, that's great. Uh, it's been, I'm very blessed by that. So they, they yeah. were honoring my time, which is really cool. Very cool. Very cool. I know you're going to go live on Instagram with Suspenders Unbuttoned the day, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You're showing up for that, right? <laughs> they seem to be able to talk me into anything. <laughs> They're wonderful. We love, I love them. them. <laughs> so, They're great. Yeah. And now I'm adding Trev. So we've got, it's Rachel, Trev, and I, and it's right before Engagement Plot premieres. So yeah, we'll be opening it up with that and uh, teasing our way into the actual premiere of the movie. Yeah, that's wonderful. I love it. Well, I'm super excited to see it. Um, and I'm just so excited for you and all your adventures. My goodness, man, it's, it's amazing. I, I'm stoked and I'm even more stoked about next year. And I'm always, I love when you're excited for the movies to come. Um, and uh, next year's movies should be great. And um, I'm working on, some great stuff right now that I hope our company true brand and with Ty Truesdale and Brian bird that you guys will be really pleased to see. We'll have some theatrical stuff too. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed to be in the position. It's a scratch and a crawl industry. So it, you know, these, some of these that have are going to probably take place next year are, are movies that are biopics that would take, that took us three to four years. You know, you got to get the rights and a lot of time massaging. Um, you know, what people don't realize is, yeah, okay, we were doing three rom-coms this year and a fourth one, and we got a great four-picture deal with Up. And But the reality is, is that it takes a lot of time to build that independently with private equity and our, our co-producers and things like that. And and the freedom we do have, and I'm really blessed, is our distribution. And because of time and stuff, we get things all the way, way up in Europe and stuff. And um, 
we we have worldwide distribution going on when when our films are released, so it's really nice. Yeah, more eyes and ears. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I feel like there's such an opportunity for that now, especially with streaming. I, there's so much content everywhere. Like, yeah. I feel like there's never been a time where there is like so many things that you can watch. I mean, it's just you could spend your whole life in front of the TV and not see it all. I mean, there and it's good. There's really good content yeah. out there. That's the hard part is making sure they know about your content and that they, they see the marketing. It's like, you know, we live in a day and age where you scroll past a movie poster. That, what if the movie poster wasn't what you needed to see, but that movie was what you needed to see, you know? Yeah. Um, and so we're, we're hoping that we can get the marketing out the way we want to. People see the trailers. I'm like, I want to encourage people to see trailers as much as possible. Determine if you want to see a movie. Because a lot of this stuff now is even as much content that's out there, there's a lot of content providers that need content. And because of the pacing that's been supplied for people, now they really need more content. So it's opening up the door for a lot of us creatives to really do things independently or, you know, as acquisitions or even more. So a lot of original content makers be part of uh, companies in house, which is nice. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Sounds friend. good. It was All nice right. talking to day. you. All right. And you Likewise. too. Likewise. Bye. Take care. Bye.